let's get started. And we, we didn't want to just bring you a couple of people that know this product or that have experienced this product. We wanted to bring you people that live it every single season when the cruising is happening in Alaska. And we have brought uh, a couple of people that are journey hosts with Holland America and they know Alaska like none other. Kaylee and Clint, would you come on and join us here? And we're going to turn over the presentation to you and we're excited to hear all about Alaska. Thank you so much for that introduction and for hosting this event. We are so excited to be talking to Bon Voyage Travel and all of you tuning in today about this place we love so much. We, like Ryan said, we really do miss having that face-to-face. -face. I wish we could see all of you in your little Zoom screens, but now you can comfortably relax. And if you wanna share any of those Alaska memories, send them in the chat box, send them in the questions box. We really do love to see those because we know Probably a lot of you have already been to Alaska. We get a lot of returners. So in this presentation, we'll be outlining the different ways that you can travel to Alaska with Holland America Line and hopefully get you excited to start planning your next vacation. Wonderful. So before we talk to you specifically about coming to Alaska with us, we want to make sure you know a little bit about who Holland America Line is as a cruise company. And one of the things that really sets us apart is the size of our ships. We are not the cruise ships that have go-karts or rock climbing walls or zip lines or anything like that. What we really wanna highlight while you're cruising with us is the destination itself. And so we really cater all of our itineraries to those explorers out there. So the destination really is the highlight of these cruises. Now we also have amazing food aboard all of our cruise ships. And of course you get to eat as much of it as you possibly can while you sail with us. And if you wanted to enhance that experience even more, you can join us at our fine dining restaurants. So we have the Canaletto Grill and the Pin Canaletto and the Pinnacle Grill, excuse me, on all of our ships. And these are our fine dining restaurants. So when you upgrade to that, you're getting that white tablecloth in a luxurious dining setting while you sail at sea with us. And we also have incredible entertainment on all of our cruise ships. And we really put in a lot of effort to make sure that we have the right musicians. So we, ta we travel to some top clubs all across the nation. We look for these talented musicians and then when we find the right ones, we offer them a residency on our ship. So when you're going to performances at our BB Kings Blues Club, you're seeing people who have come out of that same club in Memphis. Or when you're going to our Lincoln Center stage performances, you're seeing artists who have come out of Juilliard. Now, of course, we are going to pamper you every step of the way while you cruise with us. And we're going to take a minute to brag and show you some of the awards that we've been able to bring home. And right now, you are seeing that we are the best six times over. A lot of these awards are Alaska awards. But the reason we show you this is because we really are confident that you are really going to enjoy that cruise with Holland America Line. At Holland America Line, we proudly say that in the travel industry, we are Alaska. We say this because we've been taking guests to Alaska longer than almost anybody else. We have decades of experience. We're coming up on 75 years in Alaska, which is longer than Alaska has even officially been a state. So we know a lot of what you're hoping to see, how to help you see it, how to get you there. And we've taken the feedback and the experience from the years and built these different itineraries. So hopefully you can find one that perfectly suits your travel style. And before we dive in any further, we do want to introduce ourselves a bit further. Like Ryan said, we live and breathe this Holland America Line Alaska idea. And it's because we actually both work in Alaska with Holland America Line as journey hosts. I actually started going to Alaska six years ago. I was just going to do one summer working at the Interior Lodge in Fairbanks with Holland America Line. And then I realized I loved Alaska, which is easy to do. It happens to a lot of people. You go up and you never leave. So six seasons later, we wrapped up another summer this year. Although you can imagine that summer of 2020 was pretty different for us. We did not have any of our Alaska visitors. And let me tell you, we really missed having you all. Yeah, during a normal summer, Kaylee and I get to do a job that we love so much, and that's that journey host position. And we have the opportunity to travel all through the interior of Alaska and the interior of the Yukon Territory. And that entire time, we are traveling with Holland America Line guests, highlighting all of these places that we really do love. So we are definitely looking forward to that return to a normal season so we can start doing these jobs again that we truly love. 
Now, because last year was so different for us, we found ourselves with a a lot of extra free time in Alaska. A lot of it. (laughs) (laughs) We tried to take advantage of it. And what we did one day was sat down and made a list of things that we wanted to do in Alaska that we wouldn't be able to do while we're working during a normal season. What we really found out was that we couldn't get through our list because we just kept adding to it. It seemed like every time we'd cross something off, we'd learn about one or two other things out in that area that we just had to come back and see. This is not an uncommon experience. We know that many of our guests feel the same way, and it's pretty common for us to see about a third of our guests on these Yukon and Alaska itineraries who've already been to Alaska. Often that's because they visited Alaska on an Alaskan cruise, and now they want to come back again and take it one step further and journey to the interior. And so that's how we wanted to kick off the presentation. Yeah, we want to make sure that you're prepared to travel with us. And we really want to tailor some of these questions to those folks who are looking to come to the interior of Alaska for the very first time. So we'll start by addressing just how big Alaska really is. It's common knowledge that Alaska is the largest state in the United States, but really what surprised me was when I learned that it would take up a third of the United States if you were to overlay it on the lower 48. It's huge. And that's before you add in the Yukon Territory. So something special about Holland America Line is the fact that we're the only major cruise company that travels into the Yukon Territory. And if you choose one of those itineraries, you travel over 1,400 miles in one direction. Now, the reason that we really highlight this is because we want our guests to be prepared for some full days of travel. There is so much that we want you to see and do and experience while you're traveling with us. But in order to pull all of that off, we need you to be prepared for some of those longer travel days. The next question we hear is, what should I pack or what should I wear? And we've got our perfect example here. Your biggest winter coat, big hat on your head, wrap a scarf around your face. Alaska is freezing. We are joking. Don't do that. That picture was from Anchorage, but it was from January. You will not need those enormous winter layers. What you will want is lots of little layers. Everything down to a t-shirt, it really does get warm. Sometimes up in the 80s. A long sleeve shirt and then a warm fleece layer and an all weather jacket. Like Clint mentioned, Alaska is enormous. You'll see different climate zones as you're traveling with us. We've got a temperate rainforest climate along the coast and then in the interior that turns into a subarctic desert. You'll see different weather, different temperatures, and we want you to be able to layer down and layer up. The next question we hear is when is the best time to visit? And our honest answer for you is come to Alaska when you have the most time, when you can really enjoy those full days of travel, you won't feel rushed. When you have time to check every item off your Alaska bucket list, it's a big trip. You don't wanna go back to do that one last thing. So give yourself plenty of time with us. That's what we think is the best time to visit. That said, our visitor season typically runs May to September. And during that time, we experience spring, summer, and fall. They are very fast seasons. So we'll give you some of the perks of each each time frame, and maybe you'll hear something that really speaks to you. Starting in spring, that's from May until about the beginning of June. We've got wildflowers blossoming, snow on all the mountain peaks, and if you want to see wildlife, spring is a great time to come because you can peer a little further back into those forests. The foliage isn't all the way filled out. Maybe you'll be able to catch some of our wildlife young in the springtime, like these awkward little moose calves. So summer's official start date is summer solstice, and that is Mm. June 20th typically every year. Now our summer temperatures run from about middle of June to that first week of August, and this is typically when we have the most pleasant warm temperatures in Alaska, and it's also the busiest time for uh, for us in Alaska. It's when we see the most visitors come visit. It's also when those salmon runs start taking place, and then we also start seeing this fireweed start blanketing entire meadows. It's Mm. a beautiful time of year, and this entire time during the summer, we are experiencing the midnight sun. Now, I have found that not all of our guests realize how much daylight we really have because we don't even see stars during these summer months and oftentimes they're surprised by that. So while you're with us in the summer, you should blow off your bedtime, stay up way too late, maybe take advantage of some late night excursions. And our favorite one that really highlights the power of the midnight sun is the fact that you can get a tea time at 10 o'clock at night right outside of Denali National Park and golf until about 1 (laughs) a.m. 
So fall starts to show up right around that first week of August. We've got plenty of birch trees and they're the first ones to start showing off those golden yellows. And then the next to go is our tundra and it starts showing off these bright reds. We've got blueberry bushes in the tundra and they start showing off these hot pinks. And our sunrises and sunsets are starting to take place at a much more reasonable hours because our days are getting shorter. If you're a photographer, this really might be the season that you consider coming to Alaska. Fall is truly dreamy. If you want to try to see those elusive northern lights, you'll definitely want to visit in the fall towards the end of fall. So the end of August, beginning of September, because it has to be dark for us to possibly see those northern lights. And with the midnight sun on in the summer, we just don't get a chance for that. But once those sunsets get a little earlier, you might be able to catch the Aurora Borealis. And that was one of my favorite things to do when I was working at the front desk of the Fairbanks Lodge was we actually offer a Northern Lights wake up call at all of our Holland America Line lodges. So you just give your name to the front desk and that lets us call you at any hour if it's midnight or two o'clock in the morning and we see the lights we're gonna call your room and say, get outside right now. And you just pull yourself out of bed, put on whatever weird clothing you've got around and get outside. Hopefully you'll catch those amazing auroras. So hopefully you see that each season in Alaska really has its own special opportunities. We at Holland America Line have really looked into why folks come to Alaska. And we've dove into that market research because we wanna make sure people are coming to Alaska and being able to experience what they're coming to see. And the market research that Pete shows that people want to see four things when they come to Alaska. The first on that list is the wilderness. And the wilderness up here is so impressive because it's so big and so expansive and it's mostly undeveloped. And you really can get some good payoffs when you can find a vantage point and just stare off at the edge of the horizon and see nothing but undeveloped wilderness. We know folks come to Alaska to see our huge wildlife. We say if you don't wrestle a grizzly bear by the time you leave Alaska, you haven't even visited at all. Okay, we don't say that, but you might have the chance to see a grizzly bear. We've got what we call the big five land mammals. So that's grizzlies or brown bears, doll sheep, oh, like our little pet right here, moose, wolves, and caribou. And I've had guests see all five of these animals in one day when they go on their Denali National Park day tour. You might also catch the ocean five, orcas, stellar sea lions, sea otters, gray whales, and humpback whales. Now for me, I can't help but associate Denali with Alaska. They just go hand in hand in my head. Now, really what makes Denali so special is the fact that it's the largest mountain in North America. And it's really the biggest mountain in the world if you're measuring a mountain from the bottom of a mountain to the top of a mountain. Its vertical rise is just shy of four miles. It's really hard to comprehend how big that mountain is. And if you're lucky enough to see it on a beautiful clear day, it is something that will stay with you for a while. It does take some extra effort to see Denali because you can't see it from one of our cruise ships. You will have to travel into the interior of Alaska, come stay with us at Denali National Park for a couple days, and that's how you're going to get the best opportunity to see this mountain. And finally, we know people come to Alaska to see our glaciers. We have over 100,000 glaciers in the interior, more along the coast where you'll be cruising, and if your timing's right, you might be able to catch a glacier calving. And that's what we see here on the screen. That's when a chunk of ice will break off the face of the glacier and come crashing down. And these chunks of ice can be huge, like the size of a house or the size of a 10 story building. So if you do witness a glacier calving, it's a sight and a thundering sound you will not forget. Okay. There are three ways that you can travel to Alaska with Holland America Line, and we like to think of these options as building blocks, starting with those Alaska cruises. This is your seven day cruise, either round trip or one way. Next, we've got Denali land and sea journeys. So that's a seven day cruise, plus you're getting off the ship to do a land portion to see Denali National Park. And finally, we've got the Yukon and Denali land and sea journeys. So that's a three or four or seven day cruise, plus you're seeing Denali National Park, plus you'll travel to the interior of the Yukon Territory in Canada. So we'll dive into all these options. 
Yeah, we'll start by highlighting those seven day cruises. And it's important to remember that regardless of which journey you choose, you will spend some portion of your time on a cruise ship. And it is the best way to see this Alaskan coastline. For instance, you get to see these coastal mountains rise right out of the ocean. Oftentimes you're able to see much of that ocean wildlife just by peering off the deck. And what's really special about traveling with Holland America Line is the fact that we have a glacier viewing opportunity on all of our cruises. Now, because we've been going to Alaska longer than anybody else, we have more permits to go to Glacier Bay than anybody else. And that's one of our biggest tips to you. You should find an itinerary that goes to Glacier Bay. Because if you have that experience, it's an all day experience. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do while you're in Glacier Bay is we invite the National Park Rangers to come on board so that you can be informed about everything you're seeing while you're in there. Now, if I was on the ship that day, I would probably spend most of that day on the third floor because that's where we have our wraparound teak decks. And they actually open up the bow on that teak deck that day so that we can enhance the viewing opportunities. Very cool day. <laughs> Something new and exciting for 2021 is that we're headed to a new port. So now we'll be going to the port of Whittier, Alaska. And this is great for you for a couple of reasons. First of all, Whittier is closer to Anchorage than the previous port of Seward that we were using. So if you are flying in or flying out of Anchorage at the cap end of your vacation, it's a shorter transfer time to your cruise ship, even more convenient. Also, it lets us put more of our land and sea journey guests onto one of these amazing Alaska train rides. We've got the cruise train, which runs from Whittier up this Turnigan Arm coast to Anchorage. And then we also have that Denali Express going from Whittier straight up to Denali National Park. So more rail opportunities out of Whittier. And it lets us have this glacier discovery itinerary. So we have more glacier options, but this one is really cool. If glaciers is high on your list, I would look into this glacier discovery. This is a one way seven day cruise with two days of scenic glacier cruising. Well, whether you're northbound or southbound, you're going to Glacier Bay National Park. And then on that other day, you'll see either Hubbard Glacier or College Fjord. And I actually have some photos from when my dad came to visit in 2019 and we went cruising in College Fjord. These were just two of the many glaciers we saw that day. So this image really helps you grasp where you're going to be cruising when you come up to Alaska on these seven day cruises. And this is where I like to remind folks that these are round trip or one way cruises where you can depart out of Seattle or Vancouver or even those Alaskan ports. Now really what makes sailing through Alaska so special is the fact that you'll be traveling through the inside passage. So instead of just taking in the beauty of open water, you feel like you're on a river cruise because you are just surrounded by beautiful land masses. The inside passage is the gap of water you see between these 10,000 barrier islands and the coast of Alaska. It is a wonderful time. And this is a wonderful opportunity because it truly doesn't matter which side of the ship your room is located on for you to appreciate the, view, the views. And if there was any cruise to ever get a veranda on, it is definitely this one. Now the Inside Passage also gives us an opportunity to stop at many of our port towns so you can get off the ship and explore and we want to highlight some of the guests favorite activities and we'll start in Ketchikan. So Ketchikan is definitely a fishing village. I know for those people who watched that show Deadliest Catch on Discovery Channel, they've already heard of Ketchikan. We constantly have guests who come up to us and tell us they have to go fishing while they're in Alaska. And if that sounds like you, you should do it in Ketchikan. It's about the best place to go salmon fishing or halibut fishing. Now, a, another great activity that you can do in Ketchikan is you can visit the totem pole village. And there's totem poles here that date back to the 19th century and they're completely unrestored. So while you're here, here, while you're here you really get to glimpse history and you get to learn about this incredible native culture. Another port you might get to visit is our strange little state capital of Juneau. Juneau is an island, so to get to our state capital, we've got to fly in or cruise in, just like you'll be doing. And one of the perks of doing that with Holland America Line is that we have grandfather rights in certain areas because of our long history in Alaska. And one of those spots is Juneau, so that means we get to dock many of our ships right downtown. You just step off the cruise ship and you're already in the heart of it. Juneau is home to my dream shore excursion. So if you could pull this off, I would beg you to do it on my behalf because in Juneau, you can take a helicopter ride over ice fields, land on Mendenhall Glacier, and then you meet a dog musher and a dog sled team and you get to go dog mushing on the glacier. Oh, that sounds amazing. 
but you've got tough decisions to make because Juno is also home to some very good whale watching. In fact, the vendors in Juno are so confident that you will see whales, they offer a money back guarantee. If you don't see whales, you don't have to pay for it. You'll probably see whales. <laughs> so Skagway happens to be our favorite of all these port towns because as Journey hosts, this is where we've spent the most time yeah. and we've had an opportunity to hike all over this beautiful town. And that's one of our recommendations for you. Whether it's a 30 minute little saunter or an all day activity, we really think you should go appreciate the views of Skagway and the best way to do that is with a hike. Well, maybe it's not the best way because you can ride the White Pass Rail. Oh, that's a good way too. <laughs> this is by far the best excursion that you can do with us while you're in Skagway. I'd recommend this to those folks stopping in Haines, jump on a ferry, come to Skagway, and then you can ride this train ride. Mm -hmm. So what makes this train ride so special is the fact that it's a historic train ride. They started construction on it back in 1898 because of the Klondike Gold Rush. And it's a narrow gauge railroad that navigates a tight mountain pass and provides outstanding views like you're seeing in this photo here, basically the whole time you're on that ride. Now Cruise Critic has actually rated this the number one excursion of any excursion in the entire world. I seriously can't recommend this train ride enough. Okay those were highlights from those seven day Alaska cruises. Now we get to tell you about the Denali land and sea journeys and these are a seven day cruise plus you are stepping off the ship to travel to Denali National Park and I want to assure you that just because you're getting off the cruise ship doesn't mean you are leaving behind Holland America Line. It's quite the opposite. And that's really something that sets us apart in Alaska. When you step off our cruise ship, you will continue to see Holland America Line staff taking care of you every step of your journey. You'll be on Holland America Line transportation. You'll be staying at our accommodations. So you get the picture. We've made it really seamless from ship to land or from land to ship, depending on which direction you're traveling. We've made it simple. You don't even have to carry your luggage. You don't have to schlep your bags around. All you have to do with your luggage is label it put it outside of your hotel room door, go off on your day of land travel, and then we'll move your bags to your next location and deliver them to your room. So it's very simple. And I wanna emphasize that these land portions are accessible. We get a lot of questions, especially when we were doing these presentations in person, we had people come up to us and ask, if I'm in a wheelchair, can I still do a land portion? or I'm traveling with my dad and he has a hard time getting around. Should we even consider Denali? And our answer is absolutely yes, 100% yes. We are accessible on the land portion, just like on the ship. All of that transportation, the train cars, the motor coaches and the hotels accessible. So please join us. We wanna show you as much as we can of this amazing state. And these are, pretty good for anybody. We encourage the Denali land and sea journeys for big multi-generational family vacations because of the almost endless ways that you can personalize this land travel. So we'll get into that. But first we wanna give you a little context. You'll find Denali National Park in the little red outline on the screen. It's hundreds of miles away from the coast to give you some scale of this map. And in that little red outline, is 6.2 million acres of land. It is an enormous and pristine national park. In all that space, there's just one road that provides access to the wilderness. It's a 90 mile road and the public can only drive to mile 13. After that, you have to be on a national parks approved tour if you wanna see any more of this amazing national park. So we have heard the feedback over the years, we know from our personal experience that the best way for you to spend your time in this Denali area is deep into the park. So we've included the Tundra Wilderness Tour for many of our guests. Yeah, we include the Tundra Wilderness Tour for all the guests who stay with us for two or three nights in Denali. The reason that we don't include it for the one night guests is because they don't have enough time. This is an all day activity because you're going to be traveling about seven to nine hours covering 40 to 60 miles of that one and only road that travels through the park. And really what makes this Tundra Wilderness Tour so special is the fact that you have an opportunity to see three of those four things that people constantly come to Alaska to mm -hmm. see, the wilderness and the wildlife 
and of course, Denali. And as Kaylee mentioned earlier, she's had guests who have been fortunate enough to see all five of those land mammals while they're doing this tundra wilderness tour. Now, I love the buses that you're gonna be driving on because they've got some special features like telescope and cameras. So that really helps enhance mm. the wildlife viewing opportunity. Let's say that there's some mountain goats that are a thousand yards off. You can barely see them. The bus driver will just stop the bus, zoom this camera in, and then you get a live feed just like this, <laughs> of those mountain goats that you're seeing a thousand yards away. This is an incredible opportunity. In fact, one of my favorite moments to interact with my guests the entire time I'm on these multi-day tour, multi tours with them is right when they come back from this activity, the Tundra Wilderness Tour. I like to walk onto the bus and say, did you see any animals? And then I just listen to them shout off everything they saw while they were out there. Mm -hmm. But my favorite question to ask them is, did you see the mountain? Because if they did see Denali, their eyes just start to glow. Now, we were lucky enough to travel out on this one and only park road this last summer, and this is actually a photo we took from the turnaround point of the Tundra Wilderness Tour, and you can see why it's the turnaround point. They really want to give folks one last chance to get a spectacular view of Denali before they turn around and start coming back to us. Now, I have to swoop in here and be the bad guy because I have to tell you that Denali, the mountain, formerly known as Mount McKinley, is only visible about one third of the days each summer. It is such a large landmass that it creates its own weather systems. So even on a completely clear day elsewhere, the mountain can be shrouded in clouds, invisible. In fact, we say that if you do see the mountain while you're in Alaska, that you are in the 30% club because only 30% of visitors to Alaska actually get to catch a glimpse of it. This is one of the reasons we encourage you to stay a little bit longer in that Denali region. Hopefully that mountain will have time to peek out for you. Plus, then you'll have time to take advantage of some of the land excursions. So just like on the cruise, there's shore excursions. On the land, there's land excursions. These are optional. You can add them into your adventure. And there's pretty much anything you can imagine available to you in Denali. If you've got photography workshops or golfing on your bucket list, you can do it in Denali. If you want to go zip lining or whitewater rafting, you can also do that in Denali. So we'll talk about some of our favorite options. Yeah, I want to offer an insider tip. We think that you should take a flight while you're in Alaska at some point somewhere, regardless of what flight that is, because there's really no better way to appreciate the scope of this wilderness than to get that bird's eye perspective. Now, as you may have caught on, I'm a little obsessed with Denali, and so this is my favorite flight I've ever been on in Alaska, and it's the Denali Summit Viewing Tour. What I really love about this flight is that it definitely increases your odds well above 30% of seeing the mountain, and it gives you incredibly unique perspectives of Denali. You'll be on a small plane with about 9, 10 seats, everybody gets a window seat, and then you get these amazing views of Denali as you do a big fly around it. If you'd rather not climb into a small aircraft and fly through a mountainous region, that's fine. We have other options. One of my favorites is this Husky Homestead. This is where you get to visit the sled dog kennel of four-time Iditarod champion Jeff King. He has run the Iditarod four times, but he has run it countless times. He is somewhat of a legend in Alaskan dog mushing. And if you're not too up to date on Alaskan dog mushing, I'll forgive you, but we're pretty into it. Alaska, uh, dog mushing is Alaska's state sport. And I was lucky enough to volunteer at last year's Iditarod. So I'll proudly sport my Iditarod cap while we talk about it. And we're really excited to go back and volunteer in just a couple weeks again. But the Iditarod is a 1000 mile race. When you visit Husky Homestead, you'll get to hear from an Iditarod musher, you'll get to see the dogs, you'll get to watch these athletes as they train, and the best part is that you get to hold those little sled dog puppies. Another highlight of your Denali Land and Sea Journeys requires a different hat, a cooler one, a conductor cap, because you'll be on Holland America Line's exclusive McKinley Explorer train cars. These are the largest passenger train cars to date and you get to spend all day enjoying the views. They are all double-decker cars so we've got a full service restaurant on that first story, breakfast and lunch available, and then you're sitting up here on this second story underneath this big glass dome, plenty of space to move around. We encourage you to go outside. There's an open-air platform. That's my favorite part of the whole train and you have a local guide, a narrator, your rail guide, who takes care of everything throughout the day and provides local insight as you travel. 
and there's a bartender on board. Don't worry. We want to make sure you know a little bit about the special property you'll be staying at when you come visit us at Denali National Park. So you'll be staying at the Holland America owned McKinley Chalet Resort. And really what makes this property so special is that it's 60 acres just located two miles away from the National Park entrance. And we're actually right on the border of the National Park property and what separates us is the Nanana River. This is truly a beautiful property and it really is the best in this entire canyon. There's many other accommodations here, this one is the best. And we've been doing some upgrades and some add-ons just to hold on to that title. For instance, we just opened up the Denali Suites and this is an available room upgrade to our guests while they're in the interior of Alaska. And what it gives you is a balcony view of Mount Healy. That's the mountain you're seeing here. And then all of the amenities in that room are upgraded to luxury amenities. So if that's something that speaks to you at all, make sure that you mention that to your travel advisor because they'll have this room reserved for you before you ever show up on property. Now, another addition we did just a couple of years ago was we added Denali Square to this resort and this is our social hub. This is where we constantly run into our guests just relaxing at the end of the day, sharing stories, talking about everything they saw in that Tundra Wilderness tour. This is a good place to grab a bite to eat because this is where our flagship restaurant is, Karsten's. You can grab some great food there or just grab a drink and wander out to the fire pits that are spread throughout the property. We've got live music that's performed here every single night. We also host nature walks around the property. We have ranger talks here in the amphitheater. There are so many things to do here. If you put any effort into it, you will not be bored while you're with us. Yeah. Our guests love this property. I'd say one of the most common phrases we hear all summer long comes from our guests as we're leaving this property because somebody in our group will always say, I wish we could have stayed there longer. Make sure you stay here for at least two nights, if for no other reason than just to be included on that Tundra Wilderness Tour. It is definitely worth doing. And if you've got the time, we really recommend spending three nights with us on this property because that gives you an entire free day where there's no planned activities for you. You truly get to pick your own adventure that day. Okay, now we get to tell you about the Yukon and Denali Land and Sea Journeys. So that's a three or four or seven day cruise plus everything we just talked about going to Denali. Plus you're headed to the Yukon territory. And these are hands down my favorite itineraries. These are also my favorite itineraries. We are both completely biased. Yes. Because on every Yukon and Denali land and sea journey, you will have a journey host. And that's what we do, we're journey hosts. So your journey host is there to accompany you on your entire land portion taking care of pretty much everything. And it's not just us who love these Yukon and Denali land and sea journeys. Our guests love them too. And they've proven it because last year, these Yukon and Denali land and sea journeys were Holland America Line's number one, most highly rated guest experience of everything in the world, not just in Alaska. So our guests really loved the Yukon or maybe they really loved us, one of those. Whatever it is, we want to share the Yukon with you. The whole reason we're there today is because of the history. It's the setting for that 1898 Klondike gold rush. When gold was discovered near Dawson City, Yukon Territory in 1896, word got out and people from the lower 48, people from all over the world made their way north and they landed in Skagway and the adjacent town of Dai. From there, they had two routes they could take to get over these coastal mountains. They could take either the White Pass, where we now have that train, but there was no train initially, or they could take the Chilkoot Trail. And that's where we get this iconic gold rush photo. This is Stampeders struggling up that frozen Chilkoot Pass, carrying their mandated one ton of goods to the other side of the mountains. And then they built their own boats. They waited for spring, they navigated hundreds of miles up the Yukon River once the ice finally broke up to hopefully land in Dawson City. As you can imagine, many of them did not make it. It was dangerous, often perilous. But for those who made it to Dawson, they got to try to strike it rich in the 1898 Klondike Gold Rush. And on these journeys, you'll be following in the footsteps of history. Nowadays, we get you to Dawson City as simply as possible. You don't even have to carry your bags. <laughs> yeah, a couple of years ago, we started chartering flights from Fairbanks to Dawson City. So that means all of our guests are going to be on a Boeing 737, a full-size plane. It's only filled with 
Holland America Line guests. And this international flight takes less than an hour. And that gives you a lot more time to spend in this incredible Dawson City. One of the things that makes Dawson City so special is the fact that it's so remote and the fact that Holland America Line is the only major cruise company that travels into the Yukon Territory. So while you're enjoying your two night stay in Dawson City, you are really removed from the crowds and you get to enjoy this wonderful town that has rich history, basically all to yourselves. There used to be 30,000 residents that lived here during the gold rush times. And nowadays there's about 2000 residents. So you get the perks <laughs> of that small town with a slow pace, but you get to take advantage of all of that gold rush history, whether it's exploring the cultural centers or the museums, just walking through Dawson City that feels like a historic gold rush town while you're walking on these dirt roads and wooden boardwalks. And it's worth mentioning that this is where you'll be sleeping at our Westmark Hotel, this beautiful false front building here in Dawson City. It's such a cute building. <laughs> while you're in Dawson City, you'll be included on this Klondike Spirit paddle wheeler ride up and down the Yukon and Klondike rivers, which border Dawson City. Dawson's only about eight blocks wide, so it's nice to get on the water, get a different perspective, and you'll have a local guide, a Dawsonite, who will share their local flavor with you. So we talked about Skagway earlier as that port town that we love so much. And typically our land portions for these Yukon itineraries either begin in Skagway or they end in Skagway. This is where you'll get on or off the cruise ship. Now, because of that, you have an opportunity to spend an extra night or an extra two nights in Skagway and you'd be staying at our recently renovated Westmark Hotel. This is why we've had the opportunity to hike all over Skagway is because this hotel has incredible access to all of those trailheads. Now, another perk about traveling through the Yukon territory with us is that all those modes of transportation we talked about are included. And this is another one, those, this white pass rail, which of course is that historic train ride we highlighted earlier. And we use this as a mode of transportation to transport our guests from Skagway up to the border of British Columbia and the Yukon Territory. Another important part that really distinguishes this Yukon journey rather the, than the Denali journeys is that these Yukon and Denali land and sea journeys are a group travel setting. So you are with the same set of people for hundreds of miles as you travel. You've got your journey host on board. I promise it's pretty fun. Yeah, this is one of my group photos from the summer of 2019. We stopped on the Yukon River overlooking Five Finger Rapids and snapped this group photo. Really what makes group travel so fun is all the shared experiences that you have together and the fact that that translates into easier forming of friendships. We've really heard a lot of stories about people forming friendships on these vacations and then plan to go on another vacation together in the future. It happens more than you'd think. <laughs> I did want to mention for all land and sea journeys, you get to pick if you want to do your cruise first or if you want to do your land first. They're both good options. We just wanted to let you know now so you can start thinking about that and talk with your travel advisor about what might be best for you. And before we move into the different promotions and specials we have going on right now, we wanted to just leave you with three of our insider tips things that we think are really important on your Alaska travels. So the first one is if you're gonna do an Alaska cruise, we recommend doing a cruise that goes to Glacier Bay National Park. It's a crown jewel of Alaska and Holland America Line has more permits than anybody else to take you into this gorgeous area. Our second recommendation is if you're doing a Denali land and sea journey, spend as much time as you can in that area. We offer up to three nights in Denali, I would do three nights in Denali. And our last recommendation is join us in the Yukon Territory. I know it's simple, but it's just one more step off the beaten path. We are the only major cruise line taking guests to this area. So it really feels a little more wild. I had a guest tell me that he found in the Yukon what he thought he was going to find in Alaska. And that is, I think, a really good way of putting it. You're just one more step off the beaten path, but still traveling with Holland America Line in comfort. We do want to say we don't know exactly what cruising or travel will look like coming up in 2021. What we can tell you is we are excited. We are currently assessing enhanced health and safety protocols, working on these new protocols so that when your cruise date comes closer, we will be in communication with you about what we expect of you and what you can expect of us. For now, if you want updates, you can go to hollandamerica.com and right on our website, we have 
uh, banner, like right on the homepage, you can click on that for specific updates. In response to COVID-19, Hall in America rolled out the book with confidence policy, and this has been extended to all bookings made by the end of January, as long as those sailings depart by the end of October. What this really means is that you can cancel your cruise up to 30 days before it departs. And if you make that decision, we're going to go ahead and give you a refund in the form of a future cruise credit. Going on right now, we've got the view and veranda, the ultimate upgrade event, and this is good through the end of February on select 2021 and 2022 departures. So get with your Bon Voyage travel advisor and see if this might apply to your vacation, but this is stateroom upgrades to a veranda or to an ocean view, the signature beverage package included while you're on board the ship, free one night specialty dining. So that means you can have the Pinnacle Grill or the Canaletto when you're on board, 10% off all shore excursions, a 50% reduced deposit, which is a pretty good deal, and free and reduced fares for kids. Now we also have the Save Now Cruise Later offer, and this is more targeted at select 2022 cruises and land and sea journeys. And what this is going to include is a free drinks package while you're cruising with us, free gratuities while you're cruising with us, so that's an expense you don't have to worry about. We're going to give you a free signature dining package, and that's an opportunity to try both of our fine dining restaurants, the Canaletto and the Pinnacle Grill, on us. And then if you're booking a suite, we're going to go ahead and just give you the Wi-Fi. So all of those offers we've talked about, they apply to different departures, but everything we've talked about thus far is combinable with this very special on-stage Alaska exclusive 21-day limited time offer. This one is only available to you. This is available to clients of Bon Voyage Travel because of the partnership between Bon Voyage Travel and Holland America Line. So they're able to offer you this additional value of land and sea credit up to $350 per stateroom. And that varies depending on which type of stateroom you're booking, what type of itinerary you're booking. But when you're on the ship, that's onboard credit. And then when you're on the land, you'll see Denali dollars, which Basically, you can use like cash in that location at the restaurants or the gift shops or even on excursions. Um, and if you're coming into the Yukon, you'll receive Dawson dollars, which are like Denali dollars, use them in that area. And then here I think is a big deal. This onstage Alaska offer includes a $99 per person reduced deposit. That's why I said that 50% reduced deposit was a good deal because this $99 per person reduced deposit is a phenomenal deal for a vacation of this magnitude, especially as we move into 2020, 2021 and 2022. We know people weren't traveling last year and to be able to hold your space on a 2021 Alaska vacation or 2022 Alaska vacation is extremely valuable. We know Bon Voyage has a special group departure that they've already got some folks booked on. So this is a seven day cruise and a Alaskan Explorer itinerary, and this is leaving on September 4th, 2021. So if you know people who are traveling with Bon Voyage Travel, if you wanna get hooked up with people in your area, this seven day cruise, Alaskan Explorer on September 4th is a great option for you. Plus they include an additional $25 of onboard credit per person. So talk with your travel professional. I did want to invite Ryan back to just kind of close us down and, and say thank you, but we've got the contact info right here on the screen. All right, great to be back. Uh, love uh, everything that you guys said. You touched on so many things. And one of the things you touched on, Kaylee, was whale watching in Juneau. And yes, that's my wife there. And uh, that was our experience whale watching. And yes, we were one of the people that got to see whales that day. And yeah, you're right. It is almost uh, unheard of to not see a whale during this time. So what a, what a fabulous time that was. I've got a few questions. If you guys have a few more minutes, I'd like to run through them. Um, you know, talked about wildlife. Is one season or another, is early in the season going to get you to see certain wildlife or is later in the season? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I wouldn't say there's, I would say that pretty much May to September, you have good chances of seeing wildlife. Um, that said, in the fall, the moose are acting kind of crazy because that's rut season. So they're a little more bold. They're coming out towards the road, even when they're not in the park. In the park, though, that's 
in the park, the animals are not so afraid of the people. They're quite conditioned to the buses that come through. And so pretty much any time of that May to September timeframe is a good time to see wildlife, especially in Denali. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, in springtime, honestly, I think I've seen more moose and bear in the springtime just when I'm driving along the roads because they're a little bit desperate. So they come a little closer to the roads and you can see a little further just back into the trees. All right. Is, uh, is there a preference or a better way to go northbound or southbound on those seven nights? Is it the same? It's obviously the same cruise in essence, but is there is there one better than the other? I wouldn't say that there's one better than the other. It really kind of boils down to a personal preference. Would you rather spend a day to day traveling through the interior of Alaska and then jump on a cruise and not worry about packing your bags or would you like to do that kind of the opposite way where you are enjoying a relaxing cruise at the beginning of the portion and then you get to have this exciting adventure of coming through the interior of Alaska. Mm -hmm. It's really personal preference I believe. Yeah I thought right. people like to transition into vacation mode on that northbound if they're cruising first like they're coming from their their regular lives and then they transition into vacation guests and by the time I see them on the land they're they're in it. They're relaxing. Yeah, good, good ideas. Uh, I think most people are familiar with inclusions from a meal standpoint on ship. What are the meal inclusions when I'm off ship on a land on the land portion? Good question. We get this question a lot. And when we're on the cruise ship, pretty much all you can eat, right? But then we step off the cruise ship and meals are on your own. Meals are not included with these land portions. However, there are meal packages available. So if they wanna get with their travel advisor and look through these meal options, I know we've got one that's a breakfast only, which is pretty popular because it just sets people up for their day, but they still get to experience the local cuisine. Um, we've got a breakfast and dinner because you're usually traveling during that lunchtime, like we mentioned, those full days of travel. Um, but I think a lot of our guests like to try out the different options and don't want to be constrained during their land portion. So um, really, what whatever works for you, if you want to have that paid for ahead of time, talk with your travel advisor. Oh, good, uh, good feedback there. Obviously, right now, we know there's some restrictions uh, on travel around the world. Canada is included in that. Even traveling to Alaska has its own restrictions. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to predict how long they will be in place or when they will be off. No one is a predictor these days, but currently, uh, is it safe to say that Holland America uh, is, is most likely not gonna sail if people can't get into these places? Is that kind of the safest way to approach it? Yeah, I think that's a very good way of phrasing it. We're not going to set anybody up to be trapped anywhere. Okay, yeah, that, that hopefully that answers. We had a couple of different people say, yeah. well, the current policy, can I get? Now, what about, uh, you know, so the Vancouver, I mean, you could possibly see, you know, maybe some changes in itineraries if the laws are okay to do one thing and not another. So I, I would say our travel advisors can help you with that. But by and large, I think Kaylee and Clint are, are pretty right on point there that if Holland America is operating the itinerary, you will be able to gain access to those destinations. Um, we had a Northern Lights question. Uh, is, uh, is the likelihood good at the end of September? Fall weather kind of creeps in. Does that make it bad? What's kind of the thoughts on Northern Lights? Yeah, actually, once it gets colder like that, I, we have an even better chance of seeing the northern lights. Um, we do have a couple weeks of transition period in early of early fall where we know clouds come in, we know it gets rainy for a while, and then sometimes it's just like a, you don't know when it's going to happen, but it's like a light where all of a sudden it's just clear and blue all the time. And that is a very important part of the equation for Northern Lights. The equation for Northern Lights is it has to be clear, it has to be dark, and the lights have to be active that night. All right. One of our longtime clients, Robert, uh, has asked a couple questions. I know Megan's responding uh, to those as well, uh, but we'll stay with the, the Northern Lights question because uh, Dan just asked, literally popped in and said, on a given night, is there any like time frame? Is it like you better have your eyes open and don't blink? Uh, or is it something you have a chance to see it throughout a, a few hour time frame? 
they come and go as they please. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen them. I've seen them at sunset. I've been like, wow, the sky is glowing green over there, even though it wasn't all the way dark. And sometimes they're out all night long and you can just go to bed, go inside, warm up, come out. They're still there. And sometimes they just come out once for 30 minutes or for 10 minutes and then they're gone. So it really is just very lucky if you get to see them. All right, Robert asked a question. I'm not sure if I fully understand it. I'll ask you, maybe you do more. And if not, his advisor uh, would be the person to talk to. He said uh, that they used to spend several hours on, uh, on the Yukon from Eagle to Dawson. Is yeah. Still available or is that not operating anymore? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Um, what he's referring to is we were so excited to tell you about our Yukon itineraries where we fly one hour. Wow, it's so easy because we used to drive between Fairbanks and Dawson and that was a two day motor coach ride. Some of it unpaved. They went through Eagle, they went through Chicken. It was a great time, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't do that anymore because we got a lot of feedback from our guests that they wanted more time actually in one place in the Yukon. So now we do two night stays in Dawson, um, but something really important to note is that we've held on to our itineraries that drive between Dawson City and Whitehorse. And that is a full day experiencing the Yukon Territory as it is. And we do have some itineraries that even fly between Whitehorse and Dawson. And those are great too. But we really love those days where we still get to, to do it on the ground. Yeah, that's that's great. Oh, see, I knew you guys knew the answers. You <laughs> just have asked it. Um, uh, one of the uh, questions came through, and I'm, I'm sure you'll echo this, but uh, there was a question that talked about what are the price ranges for uh, the cruise and the land portion? And I would say the answer to that, like most things are, it depends. Uh, <laughs> depends on which category of stateroom you're sailing in. There's multiple options on land for uh, multiple days. It's They're not all cookie cutter packages. Uh, Kaylee mentioned the, the food and beverage package that you could add to the land piece. So uh, I'm going to respond to that anonymous question and say it depends. Uh, but to talk, this is exactly why you talk to a travel advisor. And this is why you would book through an agency like ours who's had this relationship with Holland America for many, many years. Uh, and again, the seven, eight decades of time that Holland America has taken travelers to Alaska, there's so many different options that we will find something that fits within your budget uh, with the Holland America line and, and these journeys. I do have another question uh, for you, Clint. Uh, are you familiar with the Dancing with the Stars at Sea program that was on Holland America line? Oh, no. I'm not familiar with that. No, I'm also not familiar with okay, that. Okay, <laughs> Kaylee and Clint, I'm going to take you in the Wayback Machine. Please. You oh, know no. Dancing with the Stars, right? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that program. Well, Dancing with the Stars partnered with Holland America back about five, seven years ago, at least seven. It's been a little longer than that. And on uh, many voyages, the dancing uh, entertainers would teach dances to crew passengers uh, to not to crew, to passengers on the ship, and there would be a contest throughout the seven night voyage. And every day, a different dance would be taught, and a passenger would be would be picked as the winner to then participate in the finale night of Dancing with the Stars at Sea. And then they culminated week after week after week. They would pick a handful of those winners, and they competed on one cruise, and and the winner of that received a free cruise. Uh, on Holland America. Well, seven years ago, yours truly participated in dancing at uh, with the stars at sea, and I won the day that we learned the waltz. So of all of the people on the Osterdam that participated, I got it, I was able to dance, and there I am, uh, dancing with uh, one of the, the entertainers on ship that on finale night. Uh, I did not win the week uh, that we had it. We actually had an 88-year-old man win, and he danced the cha-cha, and he was unbelievable. So really? I, but uh, what a great, and this is obviously not on ship now, but I guess my point is you can go on a Holland America cruise and have so much fun with all different types of uh, entertainment on ship, and you guys talked about all the wonderful things 
uh, off ship. So I just wanted to kind of leave our guests with that thought and make sure that they, they give us a call, they call their advisor, meet up, and let's get that cruise planned. And you, Clint, you said it, uh, lots of demand for Alaska, close to home, easier to get to West Coast for us. You can fly easily nonstop round trip to Seattle, makes it easy on the airline portion of it. Uh, but also I believe uh, every ship, it's still yet to be fully determined, uh, but that capacities may be reduced because of COVID restrictions uh, and trying to go through all the COVID protocols. So don't think that there's just gonna be uh, plenty of availability. Things are filling up faster and faster. So if you have your eye on a date or you know, I wanna go, even 2022 is starting to, to fill up faster and sooner than even normal. And I know you guys are excited to get back uh, to, to Yukon. Are you guys there now or where are you at now? We're doing the snowbird thing now. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have our backdrop here that always takes us back to Alaska, but we're, yeah, we've uh, flown down for some sun for the last month or so. So well, good we're for in you. Texas calling in. <laughs> okay, well, I, I will say this. I hope you get back soon because that means life is going to be back to normal. Uh, I wanted to take this time to thank all of our viewers for, for joining us today. Uh, appreciate your business. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, thanks to Kaylee and Clint for joining us and Megan uh, from Holland America to present such a fantastic destination. Thanks, guys, for, for being here for us. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so us. much for hosting us and to Bon Voyage Travel for hosting this event. 